Okay, better get on with the Play-Doh. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so after Mino's last definition fails, Socrates asks him to come up with another one. Basically, I've given you a shape and a definition of color. You said you give me definition of virtue. So let's have at it. And he's asking again for a unified definition. And Mino answers with virtue is, as the poet says, to enjoy fine things and to be capable of them. Interesting. So he's speaking mostly about um, like acquiring gold and beautiful artwork and um, being able to appreciate these kind of things. It's another acquisition of goods type one, but with an added uh, bit of to enjoy them. And he's talking about fine things as well. So he's not talking about enjoying kicking a ball about. He's talking about enjoying a game of chess or something like that, or a nice wine or as you say, a bit of art, um, and to be capable a, of them. So does that that mean uh, contextually the, the ability to get them or the ability to just drink? Because, I mean, I can do that. <laughs> it's a bit of both. But it's like, um, like, you know, wine tasters will say, well, you drink wine, I appreciate it. Mm. It's sort of a difference between those two things. In Mino's eyes, okay. virtue virtue would be being the wine taster. Right, okay. Um, but Socrates kind of comes back at him with the argument that everybody desires. I mean, he makes a bit of a switch here because he goes from fine things to good things. Mino doesn't really question it. Um, and you could say that there is sort of a difference between good things and fine things. Um, but he, he generally goes with it, and Socrates argues that everybody desires good things. He asks Mino, do you think everyone desires good things? And Mino says, no, um, some people desire bad things. Which, is, I mean, you could say that's true because some people desire to smoke. Smoking is bad, so therefore they desire a bad thing. But Socrates argues, I should probably scroll down, but Socrates argues that when it comes to, say, something like smoking, people don't desire the cancer or the bad lungs. What they desire is the nicotine, the feeling, the stress relief. So they desire the good parts of it. Yeah, I suppose you could even go one further where there are incredibly expensive cigars that some people really enjoy smoking. So it's sort of taking... You know, uh, versus what I used to do with my little rollies to a really nice cigar. I mean, that would be almost be a, a comparison to that. But again, both types of smoking are negative to your health. So we would generally regard them as a bad vice because they cause us and people around us harm. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you're not or most people won't be desiring them for the fact that they cause other people harm. No, so, it's the experience, as you say. I mean, like, for example, with a rolly, one of the things I used to find, I mean, when I was a chef, um, one of the things when you had that really busy ke kitchen and you've been rammed for like three hours straight and you sit down on the wall outside the kitchen and you rolled that cigarette, it was actually the act of sitting there and rolling it that was the very first part of calming down. And sometimes when I was stressed, I just used to sit there and roll them. You know, which yeah, is great. Same. Yeah, it was it, that that was something. It was just getting your hands busy doing something so you were just free to process. Um so again, there wasn't the desire there for for the negative. It was actually taking the positive I could from this negative thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's what most people do. Mm. Um I mean, if you were to give somebody a glass of poison and they didn't know it was poison. You could say, well, they were stupid for drinking the poison. Why would anybody want to drink poison? But what they would have desired was, say, a liquid that was going to refresh them. They didn't know it was poison. They always desire the positive elements. So if we were to put this into a very, you know, someone who likes abusing other people, um, would we say that is a in the same way they're, they're searching for the pleasure 
from themselves. They're not necessarily searching for the harm that they're causing the other person. Or is the harm that they're causing the other person the thing they are searching for in that instance? That's quite a complicated question and um, because it would boil down to the individual psychology mm-hmm. because it might be that they desire the, the feeling of power that it gives them. Power or is often they, the common one. Yeah, or they might, you know, there are people that generally desire the screams of pain of others and enjoy that. Mm. So it's not, while they desire to cause harm, they desire to cause harm because of the good feeling they get from it. Yeah, so even then, it's still searching something above. They're still searching for the positive in something that would be negative. Exactly. I mean, again, uh, that's a, a perspective in how you would look at it, because one person might say, well, he desires to harm people. Hmm. But is that what the individual truly desires? Which, you know, it makes it a complicated question. But I think Socrates is mostly right here. When most people desire something that has bad elements, it's not the bad elements that they're desiring. Yeah. I, 